Today I wanted to talk about avoiding burnout as a video creator, as an entrepreneur who's making videos for a living to drive sales, to build your channel. It can be really easy to overwork yourself and what happens is you sort of like go sort of balls to the wall, totally aggro, you burn out, you fall out of the loop for a few months before you get your energy to kind of film again. And I've experienced this very much in my own life and I wanted to share with you some of the things that have helped us to create a thriving company, a thriving channel while generally avoiding burnout. Don't get me wrong, I've been burned out and I've had even worse happen to me. But you know, we're at a team meeting today. I wanna to introduce you to my team real fast. It's my wife, Teresa. She is the COO of our company. This is Ryan. He's uh, one of our producers. And Billy Ward is my man. There he is, good, <laughs> holding the camera right there. We, we've got a few other team members that are offsite, but you know, our big focus today in this team meeting was to talk about how we as a team are gonna keep ourselves healthy and thriving while we take this company into the multi seven figure zone. Now, that's a big deal. And one of our big rules here is no workaholism. There is no workaholism allowed here. There is no um, hustle culture allowed here where we sacrifice our health, our families, and our friendships for money. That's not at all the life that any one of us is, you know, is trying to build. Now, so I wanna share some tips, right? I'm gonna share some things that have helped me manage burnout, and a lot of that has to do with managing your production system. It also has to do with managing your expectations. And so if you're new to this channel, if you've never heard of me before, subscribe, follow us. We're gonna be sharing a lot of some of our tips on balancing work and life as a creator, as someone who makes videos, whether you're you know, a full-time slime channel or, or whether you're the boss of a seven-figure company and you wanna implement YouTube into your business, these things are, are going to help. Now, why should you listen to me and, and not some you know, crazy famous YouTube therapist? Well, <laughs> um, something you guys may not know about me is that I am a two-time cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2017. I was already producing videos for YouTube and cancer hit me because of my workaholism. I was working, man, remember those days? Like I was working, I was a videographer, working day and night. I had three kids that were all babies, right? We had three kids under four all at the same time. And so we had like three kids practically in diapers. I sacrificed my time with them so that I could build a YouTube channel. And I remember telling my wife, I don't want to hold them because I was afraid that I would um, like want to snuggle them, you know, and like it would take time away from work. So I've, I've changed a lot since then, you know, and um, it hurts me to even talk about it. But I don't want you to experience that. You know what I mean? Like, I would have traded all of that work to put my nose into their little necks and just kiss them until I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a balance there. You know, there's a balance there. And that's, that's the big thing. Like, that's the big thing that we're all, I think so many people are missing. We're all getting burned out because we're afraid, right? We're all getting so burned out, we're afraid. If I stop working, the money stops coming in. And I gotta support my husband. And I gotta support my kids. And like, we gotta make sure like, I, I'm work, I gotta be able to hire a social media person. So I gotta work, 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 work. And what happens is you make all this money, but you have cancer, right? You make all this money, but you have type two diabetes, right? You make all this money, but you have anxiety attacks constantly, right? There's a better way. And look, it, it took me beating cancer the first time, right? So I, I beat cancer once. And what I did after that is I went right back into workaholism mm -hmm. and the cancer came back last year. Now, I want you to know that I've decided to treat my cancer naturally with alternative treatments. I was not gonna wreck my body with chemotherapy again. And as I began to get into these self, like alternative care strategies, what they call metabolic therapy, you start learning how to eat right. 
You start learning how to sleep better. You start learning how to manage stress more appropriately. You also learn how to like release mm. stress and, and some of these negative emotions that come with it. And by, by letting go of the things that, that, that really don't generate a result and adopting some of the things that make me a stronger, healthier person, we found this really, really great balance mm -hmm. where now making videos is a joy. It's not a burnout. And it's, it's practically self-sustaining at this point, right? Like no one else on the team burns out either, which means that we're able to make more videos more consistently. And, and that's why our company is blowing up right now. So what are some of the things that, that you could be doing right now? First is audit your business model. That's the first thing that we did. We took a look at all the things that we were doing, right? So like, so like, what are we doing? We're making videos for YouTube and then repurposing them onto LinkedIn and onto, you know, Facebook ads and, and repurposing them into reels and stuff like this. We, what else were we doing? Like auditing our business. Uh, I was doing a lot of webinars. I was doing a lot of live streaming, doing a lot of brand deals. And so we look at the business and we go, what's actually making us money right now? Uh, what we found is that 90% of our income was coming from 10% of our actual workload, which means the rest of the workload was just busy work. And we had convinced ourselves that we need to do this. Like, oh man, I, I need to post on the community tab on YouTube. I need someone to help me with that. So we hire a girl and she does that. Now I'm spending my time training this new hiree, hiree. And not one person has ever called us because of a YouTube community post, right? That's what auditing your business means. Now, there's a great book called Traction. I'll put a link to it down below. Ryan is writing a note right now that's like, Make sure Owen gives me a link to the traction, you know, and that's part of our system, right? Is, is like making sure everybody has their, their role. But this book, I have it on audio and I have a physical version because it's like, it's like how to develop your company, right? And we, we drew an organizational chart and realized that like, we had like seven employees that were all doing good stuff, but none of that stuff was generating revenue. And so we had to make hard decisions on, on who stays and, and who goes. And then, of the people that stay, what work are they actually gonna do? So tip one is audit your business and get rid of stuff that's not generating the result for you. The, the next thing that I wanna talk about is clearing your schedule. And this is, this has been key for us. Mm -hmm. You did not start your business so that you could work more hours and miss your kids play. That is not why you started the business, but I get it. Your kid plays the carrot in the fourth grade play and you tell him you're going to go see it, but then something comes up, right? It's that scene in Elf where, where the book guy is like, I want it by New Year's. I want it by Christmas Eve. You know, like who does that, right? <laughs> but you got a client that says, I need a bid by tomorrow night. And so what you do is you virtue signal to your family and you go, hey guys, I can't do this. I can't go to the play because I need to protect you. I need to like make all this money, right? And that's, that's the trap. We become sort of indentured servants to our company when our company should be our servant. And that's the change that we needed to make. You know, I recognize that if I was going to beat cancer, I need to sleep better, I need to eat better, I need to manage my stress better. And that comes with like taking things off the calendar, right? So I had on my calendar every single, I was very organized. In fact, a lot of our customers come to us and they say, oh, and I want to be as productive as you mm -hmm. all the time. Right. And they, they see my calendar templates and they're like, oh, these are they're so incredible. But here's the thing. We're changing all of that because those calendar templates were based on sort of the hustle culture model. Like how can I feel, fill every moment with productive work? Now we got a lot done, but I also got cancer. Remember that. Okay. We got a lot done, but I also like, was disconnected from my family in deeply emotional ways because my son, who's now 11, is like becoming a young man in front of my eyes. And I even realized I didn't even know who he was. So what we did is we cleared the schedule and I took two weeks off. Um, and my wife goes, she goes, you can't take two weeks off. And I said, if we can't take two weeks off, then this business owns us. Mm -hmm. if, if, my, if I'm not good enough for my clients to stick around, 
because I need a break, we've built the wrong business. And so we took two weeks off, we told all of our clients and not one of them complained. They, most of them were like, that's awesome, good for you guys. So clear your calendar, take some time off, don't produce anything. And I know so many of you guys are hearing that, you're terrified. <laughs> I couldn't do that, I'll, I'll take three days and I'll, or I'll take my laptop. Kinda like we have a friend who's a high power CEO and she called us on vacation and she's like, I can't put my laptop down. And it was like, why did you bring your laptop? Yep. Right? If you don't want to drink soda, then don't put soda in your fridge. So clear your schedule, go to the pool, jump in the water with your kids, whatever, you know. But during that time, you're thinking about how you're going to rebuild your schedule around the things you love to do. You're going to start by adding in those things first, right? So here's the big mistake we made. We cleared the calendar and then immediately we started putting in all of our customer fulfillments. We're like, okay, well, Mondays we do this and Tuesdays we do this. And, and it's like the calendar was full by the time we got to Wednesday. So we started again and we go, okay. And I said to my wife, what do you really want to do? that you can't do right now. She goes, yoga. I said, okay, so the first thing that goes on this calendar is your yoga class. <laughs> that's true, did we not yeah, do that? That's true. Um, did the same thing for me. It's like, Owen, what do you really wanna do, right? So for me, it's like, same thing as like fitness and working out. It's all stuff I've sacrificed, right? So we put that stuff in the calendar. We put family outings on the calendar. We made a list of all the different, we actually made an Amazon Alexa list. Um, of places we want to go and things we want to do so that when we have an idea, I could say something like, um, you know, Alexa, add Palomar Caves to things to do. I put Palomar Caves on things we should do. <laughs> so when I have an idea of things that we should do, like we could just put it on our list and then Saturdays, that's our family outing time. So Saturdays are not a time for me to wake up and squeeze more work in. Saturdays are a time for me to sleep in, wait for everybody to get up. Once they're up, we go, we go to our list. We go, what do we want to do today? We do like the, the water park. Do we want to do the Palomar Caves? Like what is it we're going to do? So clear your calendar and put on it the things that bring you life. The things, date night with your spouse, date night with your kids, you know? And look, you can't fill your calendar with only fun stuff. You have to put work in there. Okay. But hopefully you've audited your business and you know that when you come back from your two week break, you're not doing X, Y, Z anymore. You're only going to focus on what brings you money. And if you think all the things bring you money, you've built the wrong business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause all the things do not bring you money. You just don't even have a tracking system set up to tell you what's making you money. And this is sort of the, the small business owner problem, right? Um, you work, 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 but you're not actually like setting up a system that shows you where the results are coming from. I can't talk about that today, but we will be talking about that on the channel, like how to organize your business, how to track things and make sure you know what's working. Okay, audit your business, clear your calendar. Next thing, create community that's not related to your business. Okay, we all talk about Facebook groups and we pretend that our friends are in Facebook groups, okay? Maybe that's true to a point. I've got some amazing friends. Chad Peterman, is that a, something like that? I'm not really sure of his we name. We know him as Chad Ladies. I like call him Chadwick Von Peterson. Yeah. yeah, but here's a guy who is who I met through social media, has become a deep, deep, deep friend. Um, Eddie Garrison is a, is a great friend of mine, right? Like Jeremy Vest is like a brother to me. But these are exceptions to the rule, okay? What I had realized is that I had stopped making face-to-face -face friends because I had all these Facebook groups and that's where I was getting my social activity. The problem with that is your mask is always on. You're always wearing your influencer hat. Mm. And I, I gotta tell you, the, the only place I don't feel that is at Clamor Summit. Right, where Clamor Summit is a, is a conference for a very, very small group of, of creators. And those are some deeply, per I wouldn't even say their names here. I don't even, like, like, even want to bring them into the conversation. Those are like friends, you know what I mean? And I don't have to be 
the YouTube expert there. I don't have to be the business guru there. I can just wear my tank top mm -hmm. and jump in the pool and I'm hanging out with, with buddies. Nobody picks up their camera at that conference and I love it. We don't even take selfies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's like nobody wants to have their cameras out. Anyway, I realized for me that I needed to make more face-to-face -face local friends. And I started with people that I love that I've let go of. Actually, Billy's father-in-law, that's how I know Billy. One of my closest friends um, is, is Billy's father-in-law and that's how we came to know each other. But him and I have lots of contact. You know, he, like, he lives down the street and it's, we're so close. But I'm like, I'm gonna start calling Keith again. Um, there are people at my church that I wanna hang out with, but I'm like, I'm too busy with work. So I put them on my calendar and the goal is to meet with them or we have someone over for dinner, you know, like once a week. So, so mostly it's like, it's I'll meet with one of these guys, like Bradley. I go and I meet with Bradley, mostly on Fridays. Sometimes I can't and that happens. But this week I can't meet with Bradley, so I'm, I'm actually gonna have coffee with Aaron, right? But the goal is like every week I'm gonna have a, 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 a conversation I'm going to like actually get in touch with friends again and having community that can love me and support me and I can love them and I can support them mm -hmm. without any financial interest in my business. And I got to tell you guys, the cancer studies on emotional trauma and emotional stress are heavily weighted against isolation, meaning People who isolate, which is what I did. I got into my business. I wanted to become an influencer. I wanted to be on the news. I accomplished all those things and got cancer, workaholism. So I start reading about people who beat cancer. I start reading about people like, like Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, who doesn't do any social media because his friends are his friends. And that time is sacred. And I love that. And so I try to model that, right? I realized I had isolated myself from real people, and I say that with, you, know, you get what I mean, face-to-face like -face relationships, and I traded that for all these online relationships, some of which are extremely valuable to me, but largely it's me trying to be an influencer in a group, and that adds to stress. I can't be myself, I can't be authentic, and I'm just as authentic as I wanna be. So I started making physical friends again, and I can't tell you, like, I started playing guitar again. Um, and that's actually the next thing that I want to do, because Brad plays guitar, and so we get together and play guitar. I'm not very good. I, I can play, like, the first part of so many songs. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but find hobbies outside of video production, please, for the love of all that is holy. You know, like, I grew up in musical theater, and... Um, my hobbies were like crafts. I'm also very good with tools, believe it or not. Um, so I love to build things. Um, I've adopted some new hobbies and, and these aren't in the calendar. They're, my calendar stops around 5 p.m. Now I might have like a massage appointment or yeah, yeah I might even today, I think I, have like a, I think I have like a blueprint call today at five, but those are random. That, that's more like somebody needed some help and you know, so I, I'm okay to do that every once in a while. But the reality is it's like five, six o'clock, the calendar stops and it's extracurricular time. I call it family time, right? Not everybody has a family. So I, but here's the thing is I want you to, to have a time by which you unplug. Now, maybe some of you guys work through the night. I, I don't think there's any science to validate that, right? I think that the only place that you're hearing work all night, do whatever it takes is from Eric Thomas, is from Les Brown, who also has cancer, by the way, and has collapsed on stage. So I don't know how much you want to be taking his advice, you know, for, I love Les Brown, don't get me wrong, but I also know Les Brown. And so I have to, when I listen to him, I know where that lifestyle led him. And he doesn't talk about that, does he? So I know some of you guys are like working through the night, okay? I don't think that that's very healthy, and I think that all the science will validate that for me. Would you agree, Ryan? Oh yeah, I, the minute I stopped doing that, my entire life improved yeah. dramatically. <laughs> now, I know some of you guys are watching this, like, no way, man, like, I'm good at night, I'm good. Look, I get that, totally, I was the same way. Feel free, Billy's prepping a chair right now, sorry for the, but 
I, even if you're doing that right now, I want to put it in your mind to think about a transition to allow your body to sleep when it's nighttime. And there's all sorts of data on blue light and circadian rhythms. I'm not gonna talk about that today. But if you are working through the night, make sure that you find a spot during the day that you're not gonna do work and you're gonna go put your feet in the grass or you're gonna go play basketball because you used to play all the time until work, until your YouTube channel, until we went viral, you know? I used to play, like, I used to play the drums or I used to play guitar, but I don't because YouTube, right? That's, that's not healthy. So I want you to like make sure that you have time to develop hobbies that are not YouTube related. And, and here's why, because first of all, you need it. You, you, you need, your body needs that time to separate, to, to, to be away from work. But during that time, that's when your body actually learns. This is what's crazy, right? Do the studies. Like you guys, I'm, gonna, I'm just telling you stuff off the cuff. Go, if you challenge anything, Google what I'm saying. Maybe use DuckDuckGo so that you find actual information instead of advertisements um, and agenda. But you study for a test, right? Study, 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 study. Your body learns when you're sleeping. Right? It's that, it's that decompression period where the knowledge actually settles in, which is why cramming for tests can work as long as there's short amount of time between the cram and the exam, right? You cram for an exam an hour before you're good, but if you cram for an exam and you fall asleep the night before, you're going to forget half that stuff. You overfilled, right? So it's when I, like I do gardening a lot now. I love to garden. I love to go barefoot in the grass. And I, love to, I don't wear gloves. I put my hands in the dirt, right? I want to connect with nature. I want to connect with my food, you know, because I do grow food. Not, not all my food, um, but we, we, you know, we grow like radishes, you know, and, and whatever. Like, um, but when I'm out there gardening, that's when my body is settling, creating the neural pathways for all the stuff I did that day. Right, that's when all of a sudden, like the new ideas start to come in. It's, it's rarely in a content meeting where I come up with my best ideas. My best ideas are usually while I'm playing basketball with my kids, which is something that I gave up. I gave up playing with my kids because I felt that as an influencer, I have to work, work, work to protect my kids, right? To make sure they have you know, money to start businesses and make sure there's food on the table, right? What, what happened was I almost killed myself by allowing cancer to overcome my body, you know? And I've been, I've been given this second chance to, to, to correct this lifestyle. And I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not scheduling time to play basketball, but I'm not scheduling anything after five. And so when my kid comes home and he's like, hey, you want to play basketball? I'm like, yes, of course I do. Right. And it's usually when I'm shooting with him playing pig that I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a great idea for a video tomorrow. <laughs> or it's when my hands are in the radishes that I'm like, oh, we should offer this to the VIP clients. Right. You know, give yourself that time to decompress. The last thing that I want to talk about today, because I want to talk more about self care, guys. I could talk about diet with you, I could talk about stress management, meditative things. Um, but the last thing that I want to talk about is probably the hardest, and that is to remove toxic people from your life. There are probably some of you watching this today who I've removed from my life, meaning that we're still kind of friends, but your content is always so negative and so combative that I've blocked you on Facebook or I've unfollowed you. You may not know. I mean... You might know now, <laughs> right? But there are people that I know and love as people, right? But everything that they do is toxic. Everything that they do is, you know, a political message here and, and no self-awareness types, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I love these types who are giving me health advice while they're sitting there in an unhealthy state. And that brings me down, man, you know? Uh, anybody who talks like 
positively about chemotherapy. And I hear a lot of this, like people that have never had cancer, but will swear by anything the CDC says, you know, like I cut those people out because I'm not trying to heal my body with chemotherapy. I don't believe chemotherapy heals. I believe it hurts. But to me, that causes negative emotions. So I unfollow or I will silence notifications or mute that person. And it's hard because some of these people go to church with you. Some of these people you went to high school with and you're like, you know, there's, there are people that I went to high school with that, that, you, you know, love to post about negative things that we did together in high school, right? Or like, they're kind of, it's kind of like the Uncle Rico from Napoleon, you know, coach would have sent me in, I could have thrown this football over them mountains, right? What that does is that pulls me into the past and, and I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be hearing about that stuff from this guy. Like, it makes me sad that this good friend of mine is still reliving high school. And so I, should I block him? I don't know. Like, we're, I have to be able to log into Facebook and not get triggered. And so I've had to make, I don't call them up and say, hey, Dan, I had to block you because you still talk about the football game. Not at all. In fact, when that person's birthday pops up, I'm still, hey, happy birthday, bro. Right? But I can't see their stuff in the newsfeed because it doesn't encourage me. It doesn't inspire me. My goal is to log into Facebook, log into Instagram, and only see stuff that encourages me and inspires me. And that's what I'm doing. Similarly, I've had relationships that I feel obligated to that I have let go. And you let go by making less phone calls. You let go by returning texts a little bit slower than you normally would. There are people that I know and love that are, I think, destroying their own lives with alcohol. And I've, I, I can't, like, there's nothing more I can do there. I've had to distance myself because it hurts me to watch them destroy themselves. Removing toxic people from your life, including customers, will be probably the single greatest thing that you could do right now today to increase your mental health and to avoid burnout. Now, there's a lot of other things that I could say about systemizing your content and getting rid of content that doesn't work. We'll talk about that more in future episodes. I'd love to hear from you. Are you totally like pumped up by this video? Or are you pissed off by this video? I would love to hear from you because here's the thing. We all rise together. And if you burn out, it's not good for the rest of us, right? We have got to end this hustle culture idea and start creating content that changes lives that's sustainable and inspiring for us as creators.